it's going to be a little bit of fun and it's going to be a little bit weird uh, but everything will fall into place when we get to the end of it. I must admit that I wanted to do a bit of a trial session and I didn't get um, down to doing that because of the delay coming da down back around, down the hill. So it'll be a bit of an experiment for me too. I have done these sorts of things with the students in, um, in my classes and that sort of thing. So I think it'll be fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer over to um, that there and what you can see there is me of course in the corner and you can see the grid that I have prepared so I'm just going to um, bring that down a little bit and um, hopefully you guys have prepared your grid if you haven't um, you can probably watch and then go and prepare your grid, but the surprise at the end will be spoiled for you. So it would be good if you could draw up a 3x5 grid. Um, actually, I've, I've redecided on a 3x4 grid. So if you want to try and catch up, I did um, put that message out um, in the email and on the Facebook page. So, if you're with me, what I'd like you to do is, um, I've got one, two, three, four, five columns, and I've got one, two, three rows. As I said, I'm actually going to bring that down to um, four columns, so one, two, three, four. And uh, what I'm going to tell you to do is this, I want you to put D, E, F down the left hand side not across the top because the top is going to go one two three four now originally I did say five and I would have said a b c but I decided on a different picture because I thought that 15 squares might be a bit too long for us so if you can prepare yourself with that and what we are going to do is we are going to draw, you can see a picture in the corner there. Um, we are going to draw some shapes of tone. I've been speaking about that quite a lot. And we are going to copy the block with the tone, with the shape and the tone. Don't try and understand what it is. It doesn't matter what it is at this stage. In fact, it's better if you don't know. And... What you can't uh, see, and I'm just going to have a cheeky look at, oh, there's, takes at least 30 seconds from when we post to when we see the message. Ah, okay. Thanks, Lois. You are fine, and I can hear you clearly too. Hello, Bertha. Welcome. And Stacy. Oh, good. Okay, so it's 30 seconds. That's, that's quite a delay. Okay, I am going to look at a slightly different screen to you because I need to look at the number of the picture and uh, I can't see it just from there. You can't see what I'm looking at, so it's not a problem. But I know that the square that we are looking at is F2. So we're actually not going to do it in order. We're going to go down to F and we're going to go down to 2. So I hope that you have all got your, um, oops, I've taken it away, that wasn't clever, I'll bring it back up again, uh, I hope that all of you have got, better than late than never, says Irene, I'm here, we'll be looking at the beginning later, thanks Irene, uh, hello Rita, welcome on board, um, and Debede, hi Karen, okay, so for those that have not prepared their grid beforehand, uh, we haven't started yet, Irene. We haven't started yet, Deb. Um, I was a bit late uh, as well. Um, if you haven't prepared your grid, the, the um, surprise element won't happen. But um, um, I hope you can uh, join in with us. So, hello, Norovet. That's lovely to see a new name there that I haven't seen before. Um, it still tells me that there's four people on board, but there's many more people saying hello to me. And I'm waffling a bit to allow people to um, do their 
three by four grid. So if you weren't here at the beginning, it's D, E, F, and one, two, three, four across, across the, top, the top. And we are going to start with F2, and it's going to be that little picture that you see there. So the way I do it is I look at the picture and I decide where in that picture, so how far across that shape that's in the corner there, I'm not going to call it what it is. I know what it is. We are going to put that shape in that square. And I reckon it's about halfway across that square. So we're talking here. Oh, wrong pencil. So that dark shape is about halfway across, maybe a little bit smaller than off, um, halfway across. I don't know if you can see my my cursor wiggling on the screen there and it goes across I'd say if that were halfway then that's a quarter of a way so it's just a little bit less than a quarter so if that's halfway that's a quarter I'm going to put a shape that goes something like that so we are going to try and shade it in and if you half close your eyes at that um, little funny square that I've got there. You can see that the whole thing is pretty dark. So I am literally going to scribble in a bit of a dark shape. So as you can see, I am not being very worried about any detail. And I don't want you to be any worried about any detail. Now remember our five tone tonal ladder. This I'm guessing would be about a number five tone. And I might just put a little bit of a shape like that. I hope you can all see that sort of shape, can you? So we are not talking about details here. I'm just coloring that in. Now, the rest of the square is probably um, just off a white. So it's probably a tone number two. I'm not too worried about the rest of the square. And as you can see, I've colored the whole thing in, in one tone, because I'm not very worried about these tiny little changes there. So if you'd like to, You can quickly scribble in the rest of the square. So we are going to do this for all the squares, except for the one that I've lost. <laughs> so um, I'd like some idea of whether you guys are following in on with me. If you wouldn't mind letting me know, just for the first one. Um, I'm working quite quickly, so I want to speed you guys up as well. So if somebody wouldn't mind giving me a, a hoy to say, yes, we're all doing it at the same time as you. Excuse me. How are we doing? Have you all finished that square? Can I move on to the next one? Yeah, my other screen is definitely frozen. It's telling me there's four people. Okay, so Lois is done. Hopefully that's done. If it's not, if I move on to the next square, you can copy it from my squares, which you'll be able to see all the time. Okay, fantastic. You're all following. Yay! Okay, the next square is that, and that is E1. Okay, so we need to go to E and it's one. So this time I reckon it's just slightly above the halfway of that square, but at the top there, 
it's it's pretty much halfway across maybe just a smidge less maybe a little bit there and it's a very interesting sort of lovely shape like that I'm guessing and if I'm looking at that tone to see where is that tone um, I reckon that is a bit lighter than the previous tone so maybe a four or four and a half and I'm going to color that in so this is still on my shapes of tone demonstration especially if you've seen the critique from the um, from Tuesday when we've been doing shapes of tone and I've asked people to half close their eyes so that they can pinpoint what the broad shapes of tone are and not all the tiny details so I can see that there's a little bit of variance in there but there's really not much and I think the background is about the same as that it's a little bit mottled it's a little bit interesting but it's not um, earth shattering we don't have to copy that it, it, when you half close your eyes it is all merging into one tone so I'm gonna just pop that down there So I don't think that that is as dark as that. So I haven't drawn it quite as dark. Actually, in your, um, I'm just looking at the video there. It does look almost as dark, but I think we've got it sorted. Okay. Move, all okay here too. Oh, excellent. I can still see everything. Three different images. Brilliant. My, my, um, my setting up is working, Lois. Okay, we are going to move on. So the video disappeared off your screen, Rita. That's uh, disappointing. I'm sorry, I can't help you on that. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to the third box. And the third box is F4. Okay, so we go F4. Now, this has got a bit more substantial um, drawing in it. So it's nearly at the side. So if you were doing your own gridded up drawings, this is how you would think about each square. Okay, you'd go, oh, it's nearly, nearly at the side. Um, this edge, it's probably a fifth of the way down. It's a little bit more than um, a quarter. So if that's half and that's a quarter, I'd say, yeah, it's maybe an eighth, but it's not quite as close as that. And that goes, how far? That goes over halfway, if I look there. But uh, let's see, there's a, there's a point at which this goes in, and that is on about the halfway line. So these are the kinds of um, self-talk you should be making when you look at things. When you look at things, you've got to go, okay, is it halfway? Is it below the halfway? Where is it relative to these grid lines? That sort of thing. And you put these marks on your page. So now um, I'm saying, okay, it ends there and it ends there. So now I'm going to get a curve there. Don't try and guess what these things are, please. You may start getting an inkling, but it's not uh, worth your while trying to guess. It won't help you. And then we've got the, a nice curve there, okay? Now I know there's a big area of white there, so I might leave that. Um, if I squint my eyes, even this area here is as dark as this area. Maybe a smidge lighter, but do the tone that you can see when you half close your eyes. So I'm going to color that in now. So when I make this um, smooth shading pencil mark, that's what I call colouring in. The light is shining on there. I hope I'm not putting my head over the underneath the camera. 
anymore. Now I know there's a little white line there. If I half close my eyes, it disappears. So I'm sticking to what I can see when I half close my eyes. And that white area there is probably a bit smaller than I've got it. I can't believe that I've lost one of these pictures. Just before I came on, what I was doing was was organizing them. And then when I counted them, this is three by four, which is 12. I only had 11. Hmm. So we're going to figure out which one's missing. And I might have to put it in at the end, go back to the original picture and put it in at the end. How's that looking? Okay, now that's not particularly dark I might actually go that's with my 2b pencil I might actually go to a 6b pencil and make it a bit darker but I did say just your 2b pencil so you should be able to go dark enough I did over there I'm not quite sure what's going on I've got a lot of light reflecting off this actually so it might be dark enough but you can also see all that reflected light so don't worry if you haven't got a 6B. Let's see if anyone's giving me any more content. It's back. Oh, that's good, Rita. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to put my background in a little bit. So I'm not being too worried about the direction of my stroke. I'm not being too worried if I go over the edge or not. This is a bit of fun. Okay, let's see which picture we've got up next. Okay, next we've got E4. Okay, so it's not too far away from what we've just drawn. And the fact that we've just done F4 means we know that the bottom of the square, it should match up with where we had that, that um, line connecting with F4. So that's what's going to start to happen as we start filling these in. But if I look at the top of the square, I'll estimate that that's around about halfway, maybe a little bit to the side of halfway. And then there's that other white thing that comes in on the other side. So you can see the way in which I'm looking at the proportions of these square. And I'm looking at the edges to see where shapes are relative to the square. So when you're doing your own work, especially off a grid, or even if it's only off um, a photograph, you've got the, the square of the photograph or the rectangle of the photograph to help you with knowing where things go okay it's a very useful thing that we don't have when we're looking at uh, real life unless you're looking through a viewfinder okay so the next thing i need to organize is how far along this line does this white thing start and uh, or finish and it's about there and then about halfway down there's another shape there and it goes at that sort of angle, and it goes at that sort of angle, but it's got to meet there. So that works like that. And it goes to about, yep, so there's that sort of curve there, and there's that curve there. Now, I've just checked with my eyes half closed, because I want to check whether I need to put that line in there or whether it all blurs into one shape and that blurs into the same shape as that and then this is a little bit lighter okay and if I compare this to that background tone I can see this is slightly slightly darker so this section here is slightly slightly darker than that section but this section here 
is I think lighter than that section so I might leave that little square there as I've just noticed that you can't see that whole thing um, I might leave that little square as white and you can see my construction line is there so I'm being a little bit pedantic and taking it out with my eraser now I can put in my dark I should have had some music prepared to play for you while we were doing this. Now, I don't know if I was organized enough to get my sharpener. And with all this colouring in, you can see that the point of the pencil is going quite quickly. So I may give you some time to get your own colouring in done. While I go and get a, a bit of a sharpener. Okay, so I said that this was slightly darker than this, this um, number two tone. So I'm going to put that two tone in first. And it's got to match this one, right? Because those squares are touching each other. And so this is going to be slightly darker, I thought. You can make your own judgments if you want. In fact, it does go a little bit lighter. And it actually does something like that. How about that? The video of my drawing is going a bit jumpy. Okay, sorry about that, Lois. Um, not much I can do about it from my end. Hopefully it will write itself for you. It's corrected itself. Oh, good. I will give you time to be doing this. I'm going to go and look at what the next one is. Okay, and the next one is D2. So we haven't got anything near that at the moment. I'll bring my page down a little bit. Okay, oh my goodness, there's lots of shapes in that one. That's quite a complicated one. So D2, okay, so I'm going to look at the biggest shapes first. So there's quite a big um, dark shape there, and it gets a little bit darker there, and there's a line across here. So there's quite a few things to be working out. So I'm going to start with this round shape cuts across that square about halfway. And it cuts across this square, it sort of comes in like that and cuts across less than halfway or on this side of halfway. Now this funny line here is just above halfway and it's in a downwards direction. And then this line here is uh, also in a slight downwards direction but not quite as much as that. And then there's also a circular shape there. Oh, there's lots of different shapes when you start analyzing this. If I half close my eyes, though, that circular shape isn't so obvious. So what I'm going to do is not worry about that. And I'm going to put that round curve there. And I'm going to make it so that's about halfway. And I think it... Mm, so you all need to assess your own measurements. I think that's okay. And I think I'll put a dark, very dark section there. I think those are pretty much the shapes. There is a real dark one 
at the bottom there, even though it blends in like that. So uh, we'll colour that one in. I think I'm going to be in need of a sharpener in a second. Okay, I can see that there are some slight different tones in this area of that round thing. Um, and I can see that there's a, 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 a lightish smudge over there. I'm not overly worried about getting them. You can, if you want, take your kneadable eraser and just lift out. But I am concerned about the main shapes of tone that I can see with my eyes half closed that I keep telling you about. How are we going for time? Oh, we've taken much longer on this than I anticipated. That was one of the reasons why I went down to 12 squares instead of 15. But I thought we'd take less time. Okay, so I want to darken that. So this is still with my 2B. And I've just realized that there, there's a corner of light there that I, that I thought was right to the corner of the square. So I'm being a little bit pedantic and cutting it off a little bit there. Now this shape here is a tone two or three. As I said, that's, that loop in there is not that important because I can't really see it when my eyes are half closed. I can just see it. So you take it to the level that you want to. But this is clearly darker, so you can see I'm needing to come back in with my pencil and press a bit harder. Depending on the paper that you're using, you might find it difficult to put more pencil on your paper. This one is dark as well. And I think I'm going to leave that white. Um, and this one is quite close to this, but not quite. So it's somewhere in between this and that. Um, there is a slight light area on the edge there. So can you see I've put one tone and then I'm coming in a little bit darker over that. Now I know I've gone over my eye, my line there, but I'm hoping that it'll join up with something there anyway, so I won't have to worry about that. Now there is something a little bit weird over here. So I'm looking in probably a little bit too much detail. How does that look? Okay, I'm going to start moving a little bit more quickly um, because otherwise we're going to be here till 5 o'clock or something silly. So I'm going to um, move to the next one. And the next one is F1. Okay, so now we've got two places and this is nice and easy. It's just a simple color in. And while you're doing that easy one, I'm just going to dash and get my... Um, excuse the noise, my sharpener. Okay, so F1 is nice and quick. Um, you should just be able to scribble that in. Okay, moving right along to the next one, and wow, there's another complicated one. This is E3. 
Okay, that's nice because it's going to join on with um, E4. So we've, we've got a few lines there that are going to help us. So it uh, meets up there and it meets up about there. And then we've got another line that goes here. So can you see how I'm going about it? I'm putting where are these intersections on the edges of these of the squares so this white area is about there i'm guessing yeah about a quarter of the way through that's nearly on the halfway mark and that widens out a bit so i think i'm going to put okay it matches up with that and then that matches up with that that's easy enough and then that goes like that and this one is a bit more straight and what have we got yep so we've got a little, tiny tiny area of light there i'm not really um, perturbed about putting that in once again if i half close my eyes it disappears and there is a slight tiny area there which also kind of disappears when I half close my eyes. So I'm going to put my darks in first because I find that easier. And it's also easier to make, um, to work out how dark other tones are if you've already got your dark in. Because then you go, is it darker or lighter? How dark is it compared with my darkest dark? All of that sort of thing. And I can quite happily go across that line because these darks meet up. So that dark is uh, is there, and this dark is pretty much the same. I'm imagining that this might join up somehow when we get to that square. And I've already got a tone there that I know is going to be the same as this tone, so that's quite useful. I'm not shading in all beautifully and perfectly because this is just a game to show you how we look at these shapes of tone. Okay. I'm going to move on, so hopefully you've all caught up. It's difficult for me to wait 30 seconds for me to say, <laughs> wait and see the, um, the comments from you, but you can still see all of my drawing here. So even if I've moved on with the photograph, you can actually see what the shapes look like here so that you can catch up if you need to. Okay, next. Next is F3. Okay, good. We're going to fill in that one and um, that will help us. And you're going to probably begin to see maybe some of the things that are happening. So as I thought, there is at the same level there, there's an, there is indeed a shape. Okay, so that joins there, and this comes out a little bit further. Can you see how I'm constantly going, if that joins there, where is this relative to that? Is it a bit further that way? Is it a bit further that way? And I've adjusted and done things to help me. So always when you're drawing, it doesn't even have to be off a grid. Whenever you're putting a shape of tone in, or a second line before you've actually cut it in always look at where is this relative to that where is this relative to that and I cheated a bit and I made that a little bit better okay so that's there and clearly that is there and look at that that looks like the opposite of what we had there but this time it's going 
not quite to halfway, it's probably going to about there. And we know it's got to continue from there, so that's easy enough. We know that that is probably going to be the same, so I'm using what I've already drawn to find where that is, but it's much closer to the edge. And I've got a line there, so I'm going to curve that nicely to meet. That looks somewhat like that. And then this one. Now this shape here is called the negative shape. So this white shape here is very, very, very helpful. So I always look at this shape. How does that little sort of um, wave shape look? Is it allowing me to get the right shape there? And I think it is. So I'm going to quickly color that in. I honestly wasn't sure that this was going to take as long as it is. So I will understand if anyone needs to leave. And you can come back and finish. So it's gone a bit strange at the top here. That's better. Okay, and there's my background. I'm just going to put that background in. Which means I shouldn't have left that purely white. Because it's all got to match up. So I will put it in lightly and I am going to move right along. Okay, here's another complicated one and this is E2. So we're beginning to fill in our whole picture. Oh wow, this is really quite complicated. Okay, so we've got a shape that comes out from there. Ah, okay, there's a shape there, and there's a shape there that matches that roundness there. And this one comes out, how far does it come out? Well, that's about halfway. It comes about halfway, I think. And then it joins up. Oh, it's got to join up with that. How about that? And then this kind of does, ooh that does it do that something like that and then I think you might know what this is and I think I might have done that a bit too long because look what's happened here so I've got my knickers in a knot and I should have looked at where things were relative to this I've drawn that over the halfway Whereas if I really look at the picture and I put my pencil straight up and down, so you see I make mistakes as well, um, that's not going to work because this has to join up there and come down like that. So I have missed something somewhere. And that's exactly what we do when we do drawings. We don't expect ourselves to draw perfectly every time we put a line down. We look, we see, we adjust. We change, and I've just gone against one of my rules. One of my rules is draw the correct shape first before you rub out. And now if I look at the negative shape in there, I can see where I went wrong. Can you see that lovely little point? So I always say draw the correct line you want against the line that you don't want, and then you can rub out. And I've clearly done this thing which I suspect you all know what it is. But maybe you don't, so I'm not going to say its name. Okay, so somewhere I've done something's not working because this thing is quite long in the picture. 
Let's have a look here. Okay, so this line does that. This line, ooh, so I miss did that as well. So I put this to a point. So see how careful you have to be with your observation. Okay, I think we've got most of the tones. So I'm going to fill in this tone there to match that shape. Ah, that's what matches up with that. Ah. And then this matches that. And now I'm going to take that out. So I'm kind of smoothing around that shape. And then this is really, really dark, and it's much darker than this shape. So I'm making sure that it is where the shapes intersect, that you can see a change in the tone because of how dark things are and not because there's a line there. I'm not really worried about the direction of my strokes. I just want to fill in these tones. And that one's very dark. And this one is about a tone three. And I can see I've already got the type of tone it is. So I can match that. And you can see the line is blending into the tone that I've created. So it goes a bit darker there. How's that? Okay, moving right along. Next is D3. Okay. So we can see the other side of this shape. And it is a little bit higher than that. So remember, I had to rub out a little corner there. And this shape goes there. Good. It matches up more or less. And there's a dark shape that does that. I shouldn't have colored it in until I'd put my other marks in, but nevertheless, We've got a line that is a bit above there. And then it does that. Is that about right? I reckon that's about right. There is a little bit of a light spot here. Might leave that like that and color it in. So as you get more and more of these squares appearing, it's easier to work out what the tones are because you've already got ones next to it. Now there's a deep kind of shadow in there that's the same tone as that. And it kind of fades away so I'm cheating a little bit in that I didn't make that a whole shape of tone. And this is just a little bit lighter than that, not by much. And this is also a tone similar to this. So the line that I drew for the edge of that might be a little bit strong for the for the tone that I've got there, but I'm not going to be too um, worried about that for now. 
And at the moment, I'm going to leave that uh, white. Okay, next is D1. So we're coming to the corner. Hello, Loda. Welcome to this. It's probably a little bit boring for you to start right in the beginning. Um, probably much more interesting for you to watch the replay. Um, if you're seeing what's on the screen now, it might spoil you a little bit for the surprise. You're welcome to stay, of course, but just letting you know, you might want to just start again once I'm finished. Okay, so let's go to this one. And we've already got some helpful marks here. It's got to match up with that, doesn't it? And that's got to match up with that. And then that's about halfway there. There's a line that goes like that. And this curves that direction and it curves like that and it nearly goes to the edge and we've got a round thing oh, okay it must match up with that we've got a round thing ah guess what it's part of that and so we know that we can connect it up like that and then something fits here like that there's a tiny something or other there line there can't see a line down there oh and here there is a this sort of does that goes in that direction how about that okay so let's put those tones in I'm sure some of you are beginning to see what's going on here. So this is a very light tone there. This is a darker tone going in there. Oh, look what I did. I didn't really leave that negative shape there. Okay, so it's a really good lesson in checking the negative shape so if i correct it like that there's this point going in there so i'm going to use my trusty kneadable eraser to do that okay and then this is maybe a tone three or tone two and a half oh, tone three is about right that's darker there, that's darker there, we've darkened that, there is, uh, we've done that one, and this tone goes all the way into there, you can see. So I'm not worried about drawing over those other tones, something like that. Where are we next? Ah, oh, that's the missing square. We've come to the end. Okay, so at the end, we could probably finish that without having the missing square. I'm so sorry, that that is from... Um, me being in such a rush, so my apologies. But what I'm going to do is I am going to show you now the picture and let me just check something. Ah, um, that came as quite a surprise that it was finished so quickly. Um, I will show you the picture and then we'll finish that last square. So if I go there, I'm going to go, ta-da! Okay, so you can see that I got you to do it upside down. 
So shall we just finish it while it's upside down and then we'll all turn our pictures around. So that'll make it much easier. We've got the edge of that bowl like that and it's coming down like that. The edge of this vase is doing something like that. Yep. So we can turn that in. And we can turn this in. And I can take away some of my excess lines. And ah, oh, this has turned out to be a little shadow underneath that bowl. So when you turn things upside down, besides the fact that we've gridded this, you do get some helpful shapes that you don't know what they are therefore you begin to draw them uh, well and the last thing that I'm going to do is that because when you've got a shape that you know what it is then you draw what your head wants you to draw rather than looking at the actual shapes of tone and that's what this exercise has been about right from the start it's been about the shapes of the tone that we see, even though we didn't know what things are. And we've still ended up drawing something fairly recognizable. Even though we may not know, have known what it is um, from before. So now if I go there, it's a bit of a wonky pair, but the pair is quite wonky in that photograph. We've done that pretty accurately. I think the only thing left is, oh, I've left that a bit white, I guess. So I can just correct that a little bit. And these are highlights. Oh, I've just noticed that there's a, a stalk there, but this was so dark in here that um, we didn't see it, or I didn't see it. Did anyone see it? And that, my dear friends, is drawing a picture with me using a grid using it upside down. I hope that you didn't know what anything was until we got a lot further in. And it's a, an example of what you can do just with shapes of tone. And if you get to understand and see those shapes of tone, then you will nail any of your drawings. Think about the kind of language I was using. I was going, oh, it's about there compared with something else that line is straight up and down and this one's crossing over and it's intersecting there it's darker or lighter or longer or shorter or um, what direction it goes in and that all mattered what it was did not matter and in fact not only does it not matter it's not very helpful because your head will draw what it wants you to draw um, if you don't draw what your eyes are seeing so all that's left for me to say and i will say that my book is so so close to being printed if you don't know get drawing is the name of my how to draw book and it's going to be published really soon i will absolutely tell you all when it will be available it will be available as an ebook on pdf as well as physically so I'm really really excited about that and um, excited about you all sharing that uh, time with me so thanks for being on the video Karen Frankel signing out by saying get drawing bye bye